There's one Trump ally who's actually flown under the radar, even in the coup case that I just mentioned, is being brought by Smith. And yet he's a very famous figure, Roger Stone. You may recall he was flanked by Oath Keepers on January 6th. He's seen right there outside a D.C. hotel. Now, we reported on Stone discussing and coordinating a plot to try to get states and electors to overthrow the results that had Trump losing. This was on the beat this summer. The final decision as to who the state legislatures authorize be sent to the electoral college is a decision made solely by the legislature. We must be prepared to lobby our Republican legislatures. And Stone discussed this idea about Trump trying to just push forward alternate electors, like a type of government fraud that then could sow chaos that could somehow help them steal the race on the 6th. You may remember some of this has now been further documented. Some of it happened. Here's what we have on tape. Any legislative body may decide on the basis of overwhelming evidence of fraud to send electors to the Electoral College who accurately reflect, reflect the president's legitimate victory in their state, which was illegally denied him through fraud. Now, that is what he was saying. Separately and over time, we know that Electors who pushed actual fraud have now been indicted or civilly sued in several states. Stone denies wrongdoing. He says that states could legally exercise the kind of authority he discussed there. And amidst these reports, we want to make sure you know that he previously posted online that he never plotted the seating of fake electors. I've interviewed him before, and we have welcome to come back on the beat if he wants to discuss the story. But that is his public response to some of this. Now, tonight... I'm going to show you here, only on the beat, even more exclusive video. This is from the same documentary, but it's new. So that's the context. But this part has not aired on MSNBC yet. This is something that occurred mid-January 2021, so a week after the insurrection. Stone's fraudulent electors scheme, at least the one he voiced support for getting states involved in, did not, of course, ultimately stop the certification. And you kind of have the therapy part of this. Journalists know and documentarians know sometimes if you get people talking, you seem to get their emotions out, too. Even people who have less than 100 percent solid relationship with the truth. So here is Roger Stone venting to the documentarian about Trump. What would you advise the president to do? I wouldn't give him any advice. Because he had, he had all the time and all the power in the world to solve his problems, and he chose not to. There's plenty of things he could have done months ago. He should have started by uh, enacting the Insurrection Act when Portland and Kenosha were burning last summer. That was the test. Will Trump let us burn down America and do nothing? And that's exactly what he did. So it emboldened them. He should have invoked the Insurrection Act. Listen very closely. I mentioned this earlier in the show in a different context. Learning from the past and the facts is important right now. Roger Stone, whatever one thinks of him, is one of Donald Trump's oldest advisors. They worked together for decades. He was involved in the 2016 campaign. He was involved, as you see, under his own words, not an accusation, just a fact, in the efforts to overthrow the certification of then-President-elect Biden on January 6th. Roger Stone denies wrongdoing, that is to say, he says that what he was doing was not illegal. Okay, but what he was doing was trying to overthrow the results. And there you see what he says in that moment in his own words. Invoke the Insurrection Act, abuse power of force and violence before handing off to the president-elect. These are the people around Donald Trump as he runs for what everyone has promised would be a much different, much more extreme second term. Yeah. Here's the biggest question that's loomed over all of this. The January 6th committee, 
uh, didn't resolve it. Uh, we don't know if Jack Smith will bring it in if that goes to trial. Do you think Roger Stone was in a position to convey back to the Trump team that the militias had a plan to go in to breach the Capitol? There's no question that he had the capacity and the access to communicate it back. Do you but think he did, is what I'm asking? That would be speculation. You on didn't my hear part. it. I didn't hear it. Well, you know, investigators, we look at these things, you say, well, there's, there's two possibilities. It was a plan so secret that they didn't know about it and they benefited from it, and that can happen. Or the more kind of obvious or more seemingly direct thing would be, all of this effort went in, these militias took tremendous risks, and they didn't do it at arm's length. They kept people like Stone around who they thought were one degree from Team Trump, and that was so that they could coordinate. Uh, the committee never resolved that. Based on all the evidence you have, do you think that is a possible or likely scenario, that the militias did tell the Trump folks, we're going in? I think it's... it's Whatever their plan were, and I'm talking specifically about the Proud Boys here. Yeah. Whatever their plans were, I would say it is highly unlikely with what I witnessed that Stone wasn't fully informed about it. Wow. I mean, that's so... <laughs> this is really fascinating. I mean, that's the link. And for some people who say, oh, well, we assume it or whatever, assume is not good enough. I mean, Jack Smith wants to show as much of a link as he can, and he's talked about what they benefited from. In closing, you spent all this time with this man... Um, what's your relationship with him now? What do you think of him as a person, as a character? Well, I mean, I, I, I pretty much stumbled into the story. I was looking into a number of these false narratives, and I was doing an interview with Stone. I sat down, and we never stopped filming. And it turned into this roller coaster ride of Stone getting arrested, getting convicted, orchestrating his own power. Yeah, all the way back from the earlier one. Exactly. Yeah. L lighting the fuse to the Stop the Steel movement. And all the way through this, we were allowed to, we got the chance to film this inside as it happened. And what I noted from very early on was the Proud Boys were at his beck and call. I mean, they were carrying his books at fundraisers. Yeah. They were helping managing his social media. Yeah, they and they did the sedition. Legally, we call it a sedition because it was convicted as a sedition. Uh, and they knew what you just mentioned, that Roger Stone's bond to Donald Trump was so deep that Trump would take what was still a controversial act and pardon him.